Compared to the conquest of Italy, the Roman conquest of the Mediterranean was much quicker. The second stage was the pri triumph of the Western Mediterranean through three different wars against the Carthaginians, through what's known as the Punic Wars. The first one lasts between 264 and 241 BC, the second 218 to 201, and then the third, which leads to the destruction of Carthage, is in 146 BC. This, this stage is the hardest of all because of the fact that Rome has to fight Carthage for these territories. Carthage is one of those cities that was established by the Phoenicians on the north of the African coast. As a Phoenician city, Carthage was very active in trade and commerce. In 264, Carthage was a lot like Rome. It was powerful, it controlled a large amount of territory, including Spain, and wanted more. The reason for war is quite simple. The two powers were very close together, and they were the biggest powers in the room. Therefore, it seemed only inevitable that these two guys would gun the blows. By 264, Carthage had established a lucrative commercial empire, which included much of North Africa, part of Spain, and part of Sicily. The Romans fought two long, costly wars against Carthage, 264 to 241, and again, 218 to 201. The Romans were at a disadvantage for the first one, however, because they had no navy. But they boldly moved to build several large fleets whenever they saw necessary. That's one thing that the Romans did well. They did what needed to be done. They also did another thing well. They took a punch very well. They were able to withstand very severe losses through just the sheer will of perseverance. The second war was much worse. It starts with the invasion of Italy by the Carthaginian general Hannibal. Hannibal was the greatest general since Alexander the Great, and he won several major victories against the Romans. Hannibal hoped that the allies of Rome would revolt and abandon her during her crisis. But the Roman allies remained loyal, providing more soldiers to the Roman army, and they finally win. Hannibal led his forces into Italy in 218 BC, and proceeded to beat the Romans in battle after battle. But Hannibal could not do two things. Number one, take the city of Rome itself, and number two, get other Italian cities to abandon Rome. The policies that we have talked about in terms of giving lots of rights and independence to Italian cities pays off in the Punic Wars. Every time the Romans fought a battle against Hannibal, they lost. So they decided just to harass his army as it marched up and down. In other words, the Romans just tired the Carthaginians out. Then in 204 BC, a Roman commander under under Roman army, excuse me, under the command of Publius Cornelius Scipio Africanus, he will get that term after this victory, he lands in Africa and threatens Carthage itself. Hannibal is forced to flee and go and defend his home. At the Battle of Zama, near Carthage, the Romans defeat Hannibal for the very first time. Hannibal flees to the Hellenistic kingdoms of the east, and Carthage surrenders. Rome is now the chief power of the central Mediterranean. With, when Car Carthage was no longer a threat, the rest of the west became allies of the Romans. After that, the last stage of Roman expansion was relatively easy. It involved Roman expansion into the eastern Mediterranean between 201 and 146 BC. Here, the major enemies were the kingdoms ruled by the successors of, great, of Alexander the Great. Some states avoided war with Rome, and they, they were able to prevent annexation for some time. But by 146, Rome could take any other power in the, in the east that she wanted, yet some escaped for a long time. Now after Zama, the king of Macedonia, Philip V, welcomed Hannibal to his court. Hannibal had assured Philip that the Romans had expended so many men and resources defeating Carthage that Philip could pick up some territory. On Hannibal's advice, Philip began to put pressure on, on the Greeks, who complained to Rome. The, Rome, the Romans therefore put Scipio in charge and sent him out. Scipio raised an army, and in what we call the Second Macedonian War, he, he crushes Philip within four years. The Punic Wars had not in fact weakened Rome, but it had given a large, experienced fighting force led by truly able commanders. After defeating Philip, the Roman Senate made the Macedonians pay a major fine and told the king to leave Rome's friends alone. That done, Scipio and his army returns to Rome. Hannibal escapes and, and ran away to the Seleucid kingdom. Once there, Hannibal convinced, convinced the Seleucid king, Antiochus III, saying, Hey, the Antigonids are weak, and the Romans have to be tuckered out by now, so why not take a shot in expanding in terms of Luc uh, Seleucid interests and possessions in Greece? So in 192 BC, the Seleucids began to move into Greece. The Romans again asked Scipio to go and work again. 
And get, as you can guess, he goes and defeats the Seleucid army in what's known as the Syrian War, between 192 and 189 BC. The Seleucids were forced to pay a fine, told to behave, and the Romans went home. At this point, Hannibal has nowhere to run, and he ultimately commits suicide. So between 204 and 188 BC, Rome becomes the big power in the Mediterranean. Now, I should mention that the Romans did not annex any of these defeated yet. They, they, they charged them just big fines and told them to behave. The extension of Roman expansion up to now, outside of Italy, had been the acquisition of Spain from Carthage, and that's about it. Rome was not the great power and great empire that she would become, but Rome had changed as, as a result of all of these wars and not necessarily for the better. These changes can be viewed in a couple of ways, but it led to a very different Rome, both in terms of her government and her foreign policies. So we are now going to start looking at those changes, particularly in the Roman economy and the government first.